What's going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the best flash options for the Sony Alpha cameras, whether you're doing portraits, event photography, or wedding photography. Now if you've seen some of my videos before but have not yet subscribed, be sure to click on that giant red button down below for more future Sony Alpha content such as this one. Alright, so this is what the hip Sony kits are lighting with, the Flashpoint R2 flash system or you might commonly see them on the internet as Godox. But they're literally the same thing. Godox is just the original manufacturer and Adorama just rebranded them into Flashpoint. However, for the sake of this video, I'll address them as Flashpoint, but I'll make a note on the video their Godox equivalent model, just in case you wanna purchase that version instead. And yes, by the way, the correct pronunciation is Godox. They are a company from China and in Chinese they use the characters God and Ox. So technically it's pronounced Godox and not Godox. So just a neat little trivia for you. Also in this video, I'm strictly focusing on Flashpoint because I believe they are top notch in quality and also very affordable. And yes, I'm aware that there are cheaper options out there. But again, this is what a majority of the Sony shooters are using. All right, let's get into it. Let's start off with the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the king of the mountain, the Flashpoint Explorer 600, or what Vivian likes to call it, my giant ray gun. Now, this is the first monolight that I've ever bought, and coming from someone who is just a complete newbie with off-camera flash a couple years ago, I can honestly say this was extremely easy to use, and I was getting amazing results immediately. Of course, it did cost me a pretty penny because I bought it right when it came out. With all the necessary accessories, this entire portrait setup costed me over a thousand dollars, excluding cameras and lenses. So why is this thing so damn expensive? Well, it's in its name. It's capable of outputting 600 watt of power. It also has these two main features, HSS and TTL. Now, without getting too technical with these terminologies, here's what you need to know. HSS, or high speed sync, is something that you might wanna look out for if you want to have something that can overpower the sun. And TTL, which means through the lens, to basically explain that is pretty much auto settings. So the only settings that you need to worry about are the ones on your camera. The camera will then let the strobe know how much power it needs to fire in order to properly light your subject. Let's talk a little bit more about high speed sync. Now, flashes that aren't capable of high speed sync wouldn't be able to shoot faster than one over 1 25th of a second or one over 1 60th of a second. So this feature allows you to shoot at the fastest shutter speed possible, usually one over 8,000th of a second on a full frame camera and one over 4,000th of a second on an APS-C camera. You would use these extremely fast shutter speed to properly expose for the background in bright sunlight. And the Explore 600 will be able to fire at the precise moment of when that shutter goes off to properly light your subject, giving you these kinds of results. This is awesome because it gives you the flexibility of shooting photos anytime during the day. You're practically bring studio-like lighting to the outdoors. So if you're very serious about getting into portraitures, especially if you're running a photography business, then this is a must have. This is gonna be great for modeling shoots, for family portraits, for engagement shoots, for wedding romantics, and even studio work as well. Just a quick note, if you're planning to do a lot of studio work, be sure to pick up the AC adapter. You don't wanna be worrying about charging your batteries throughout the day, especially if you're shooting in a studio. Now, there are not a whole lot of cons about this strobe other than it's kind of big and kind of heavy. So if you're doing anything by yourself, you're shooting by yourself with no assistant, then pick up a sturdy C stand or a light stand with some sandbags weighing it down just to be safe. This will of course add to the bulk of things you would need to bring on a shoot. However, if you could get a mobile lighting assistant, that would be the best as they'll be able to help you adjust the position of the strobe much quicker. I'd recommend picking up this photo flex pole reach for extra mobility. For the modifier, I've been using the 38 inch Parapop Glow Octobox, the Bowens mount, and it's been working fantastic. To trigger the strobe, I use this wireless transmitter, which usually comes bundled with the light itself. Just make sure the one you're getting specifically says it's for Sony. And you can also use the same wireless transmitter for all the other flashes that I'll be talking about later in this video. 
By the way, all the products that I'm mentioning in this video are linked in the description box below. The last thing that I will say about the Explore 600 is that it does come with a case, but I would prefer not to use it. I usually put it in my Think Tank Trifecta 10 bag, and it actually fits everything that I need, including the A7R2 and the 85G Master Lens back when I had it. Or I would transport it in my Pelican case. Next up, we got the Evolve 200. It's a lot smaller compared to the Explore 600, but it does pack a punch. They actually call this a speed monolight because it can be used as a monolight or a speed light depending on which of these attachments you use. I personally love using this over the Explore 600 if I know I won't be shooting in intense sunlight just because of how portable this damn thing is. They uh, advertise this as a pocketable size flash, but unless you have huge expandable pockets like these sweats I'm wearing, they ain't that pocketable at all. But still, small and compact enough to fit in most bags and cases. To use the 38 inch Parapop Glow Octabox with this light, you would need the Godox S-Type bracket, which is available at a very decent price. And because this setup is a lot lighter and less cumbersome, you can solo your own shoots without an assistant. Now, you might be wondering how powerful this thing actually is. It's actually pretty damn powerful. I shot some of these photos during high noon on a hot summer day, and it did an amazing job lighting this family right here. Granted, I probably had to fire the light at full power with no modifier. I personally like to use this indoors with massive sunlight leaking in at like a cosplay convention or something, or outdoors with lots of available shade. But to answer the question that you might have, yes, it can overpower the sun, but it's gonna be very situational. You might wanna have your subject in a shaded area or get the light as close to them as possible and use a really, really tight lens so the light is not in the frame. And if you're firing full power, just be weary of the two second recycle time and shorter battery life. Alternatively, you can pick up two of these Evolve 200 and use a twin head adapter, effectively giving you 400 watt of power. My good friend Francisco Joel Hernandez said he prefers using the Evolve 200 with a twin head adapter whenever he travels out of Texas to do portraits. The Evolve 200 is a great standalone light for any hobbyist out there or anybody who's looking to get into off-camera flash portraits and have a bit of money to spend. For the pros, this can be a great secondary light. It can complement your Explore 600 as a rim light, giving your photo that extra bit of pizzazz to it. And since it can be a speed light, it's compatible with the Magmod stuff if you happen to own any. Now, if you're looking for a basic flash speed light solution, you're not really looking to overpower the sun, maybe a simple fill flash during golden hour, or maybe, or maybe you're looking to mainly use it uh, indoors during a wedding reception or something, then you might want to consider the Flashpoint Zoom R2. Again, this is capable of high-speed sync and the optional TTL. This is a great budget option, especially if you're just starting out, tight on cash, but still want some decent result. Make sure to check out my kit page linked down below if you want to see how to set this up as a simple portrait light. The Zoom R2 can act as a transmitter, so if you have multiple of these or any of the R2 lights, it can trigger them all to fire at the same time. So if you're planning to move on to the Evolve or the Explore units, just know that they can all work together because they are in the same family. If you're using one of the Sony A6000 series cameras, then I recommend going for the Zoom R2 Mini. It's in its name. It's like the R2 but obviously downplayed a little bit in terms of functions and power. However, the form factor is much more compact and friendlier for the smaller cameras. And yes, it's capable of high-speed sync and TTL and can be used to trigger the other R2 family members as well. Having something like this for the smaller cameras just feels a little bit more balanced compared to using a full-size speed light. Again, everything that I talked about in this video is linked in the description box below, but be sure to check out my kit pages to see each individual bundles to ensure you'll be picking up everything that you will need to get your off-camera flash shoots going. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.